Okay, just to show you, um, you know, on my website, first of all, my, my website, I have also other things there. If you go to resources, you find some information might be useful. But, um, yeah, we are going to see, yeah, but um, you see material from all courses. I have uploaded the, um, there are some here, some class files we're going to use today. I hope we have time to make an exercise in class. Uh, then uh, the lecture notes, the PDF, as I mentioned yesterday, you get the PDF of what I'm writing here. Then the video. I will. I haven't made the list yet on YouTube. Okay, I will try to do that uh, on the weekend. And here is reference material, and you have what I mentioned yesterday. Okay, you have the PDO in English of uh, Hebron and Bisund. I think Volve is in Norwegian. Then you have this reference material. There are some just some uh, um, extracts from different references. And then you have this supplementary. If you have more interest, you want to go more in deep, you can just read those, those, uh, that material. Okay. And they are um, password protected. So I will put the password on Blackboard. Okay. So all of you just have to use it to open the file. Okay. So yesterday we talked very general about. Uh, about uh, the field development process, okay, all the type of uh, stages it has, about what is inside each one of these boxes. And the way I have done it here is to put it one by one for one hour, two hours, to see exactly what happens inside. Okay, now I'm going to you to do you to bore yourself. Okay, so we are. I'm going to say how um, basically you will have to read. Um, some document I'm going to upload, and then you have we're going to have like a class session, and we are going to discuss that. Uh, I will be we do it with that Kahoot, okay? We do it like in a quiz type uh, because I think it's a better way that I bore you here. You probably disconnect after five minutes, and then okay. But uh, so let's see if we find uh, do you have any suggestions how to how to do it, okay? But my idea was I give you a few documents to read, and you have to split in, in, you don't read all of them, but some of you split, some of you read a put, some of you read uh, this, you know, a document, some of you read the NPD guidelines, and then we discuss all of them in class, okay? So you have to do some work, but you don't get so bored in class, okay? But I will send you the instructions, um, and let's see if we do that next week. Um, and that's... Uh, uh, this presentation, I will also put it on the website, and just very briefly what is done in every in every stage, okay? And there are a few things, engineering things, we are going to make here in class, okay, that are also done during the, the field development process. Okay, like uh, we are going to have one or two classes on reserve estimation. Uh, we are going to make this simplified economical valuation. We're going to use, I'm going to present you some a method that is used for evaluate, um, to evaluate uncertainty. Uh, we are going to use also, you know, a lot of text, but we are going to make also the flow assurance part, I already mentioned, the production strategy that we're going to start right today. So, and also I thought some of you have some strength, maybe some of you are more uh, strong on the petroleum side, are more uh, stronger on the petrophysics, some of you are stronger maybe in exploration, some of you are stronger in the processing part, or some of you are stronger in the economics. So I think that in that way, you take the part that you feel better, okay, and then you explain to the others, and that I think that's maybe the best way, okay? But let's see how it works. So that material I'm also is not uploaded yet, but I'm going to upload it on uh, on my website. But what I want to talk today about is um, let's talk jump right away into 
field performance. Okay. Okay. And we are going to the goal of this lecture, maybe a bit of next lecture, will be to start to make our first prediction of how the field behaves. Okay. It's all about we want, we don't know how, okay, how the field will will perform. So we want to find a way that we can predict that behavior, okay, in the most accurate way, and we can try different ways to produce the field, okay? We can try maybe a thousand ways that I produce this virtual field. It's like I create some sort of a virtual field, a model, okay? Then I produce it many different times, and I see the best way to produce this asset. Because in real life, you have just one chance, right? So you want to make that the best chance you, you can. So as a whole, keep that in mind as we, um, as we you know, go through the lecture. You have a virtual field, a virtual model. You want to produce different times, different ways to see the best way to produce the real field. Uh, and the main indicator of performance, so the one that we use most, the one that is the most important in the field development planning is the rates of oil or the rates of gas versus time. Okay, depending if your field is a gas field okay, versus time. That's the main and the first indicator and also it helps you to calculate many other things. With among them the revenue, okay, the one of the or almost the only source of revenue on my field is the production, the sale of this oil and gas. Okay, so that's why I have to be. That's the main factor I'm going to look at. Okay, the main technical factor I'm going to look right now. So there are uh, there are mainly two ways. Okay, let's say two production modes. Okay, two ways to produce my field. Okay, and we are going to say, let's put letters, okay, mode A, okay, and we have mode B. And in mode A, also called plateau mode, basically, like the name indicates, okay, either Q oil, or Q gas versus time simply is constant with time. And then at some point, what happens? It starts to decline, okay? And we have two very distinct periods. We have what we call the plateau period. Okay, and we have the decline period or decline phase. <clears throat> and that point, which is very distinct, it's the end of the plateau. So why why that happens? Okay, why have you have intuitively that makes sense, right? Nobody jumped and said that's not possible. But why that happens? Why I reach? I cannot keep producing this rate just forever. Okay, there is one thing is the physical, the system reaches some limit, okay? Some, so it's, we say that's due to a physical, due to the physical uh, constraint of the system. Okay. But also we will see now, could be for other reasons, not because you see always the drop, it's because you cannot produce it, okay? It might be for some other reason, and we are going to go very soon to that. Okay, or let's say here, or other. Okay, one is physical constraint, that's the maximum the system can deliver, and then it starts to, to decline. Um, 
or yeah, maybe other things. The other mode, mode B, is simply um, decline mode. Okay, Q oil or Q gas. Okay, simply have from the beginning, I have some decline. Okay, very simple like that. And it's not that that's the maximum you are producing, all maximum, okay? But you are producing in a shape that is just declining with time. Now, be aware the, the profile of the field doesn't look so nice, okay? Never looks so nice. So actually, if you go and you see, remember in this website I told you yesterday, the NPD. Okay. Let's go to this website I showed you yesterday, the NPD. Okay. They are very open, and if you go, I think it's FACTA, uh, let's put it in English, okay. So FACT pages, and you go inside um, field production, you get all the production of every field, okay. You get by month, you get by year, everything is open. How much is produced by that field? If you're a bit lazy and you don't want to look at all of those numbers, you can go also on my website. I have made something uh, a tool for you. Okay, it's not there, so where should it be? I T dot Okay. It's good that this happens in class and doesn't happen to you. Okay, files, it's, it's this file here. So let me copy that link. Okay. And I think it's a bit outdated. I did it uh, last year or two years ago, okay, 2017. So probably it's, um, it, you know, it needs some update. If some of you wants to do it, send it to me after, that will be fine. But I'm taking all of that data from the NPD, and then I'm calculating rates, okay? Base that you're producing every month, all 30 days, which is an assumption, but the number of days per, per month are not reported, okay? So you got here per field plots, and you can see different fields, how it looks like, okay? And you can see it looks far away from this nice plateau that we had or from this decline, okay? You have a lot of noise, okay, but up and down. So keep keep that in mind, even though we are always working with like um, um, like ideal production profiles, you always have these jumps up and down, okay? For all kinds of reasons. You have production issues, well, problems with one well, you have to perform maintenance, you have swinging, uh, the problems with the processing facilities, all kind of issues, okay? But the thing is that the trend, maybe you can recognize here a bit, how is this field producing? Ormen Lange, a huge gas field, what, what production mode will you assign to it? Decline or plateau? Huh? Plateau, why? why? Well, because you know, right? But by looking at that, at that yeah. figure, okay? Well, you say it's more or less keeping oscillate, at least on this time, okay, from 2009 all the way to 2013, oscillating around the same value. It's not that it never can produce, in, once it produces here in decline, it should never almost produce that number again. Okay, here you see it goes back to that number all the way to here. So I would say this field had a plateau from 2009 to 2013, okay, four years, and then it starts to go down. Okay. But have that in mind, when you see some of the profiles I'm making here ideal, okay, 
that has a lot of fluctuation. Okay. And yeah, you you are going to maybe do it. Um, you you brought your computers, yeah, all of you. Who doesn't have computer? Okay, yeah, you can team up with a with a friend. We we are going to make maybe an exercise uh, later. Okay, but you will see it's very a bit difficult to have exactly uh, a constant number. Okay. So I, I say if you have some time, free time, just look at different fields that maybe you have heard on the news that some of your friends have told you about. You see how they, you know, you can select here different fields. If it's gas, it will appear here. Oil will appear here. And you can see uh, different things. Now, when do I use? That's something I decide, okay? I decide if to produce a field in mode A or B. And that's what is called that process to decide how much the field will produce. Okay, it's called production scheduling. Okay, and Remember, I can decide that I want to produce this number, but at the end, nature will tell me, stop. You cannot do it anymore. I can decide to produce it like that, but then the nature will tell me, you're going to follow exactly this line, okay? It's not that I can decide I want to produce here that number, okay? Sometimes the physical constraint of the system, they tell me they force the, the value. So production scheduling, it has one part which is deciding, okay? But then the other part, which is even more important, is predicting. Okay, so there are both both things. Okay, deciding I can decide some places, and we will see now how do we decide. Okay, and the other thing is predict. And predict sometimes in the field in a, for a long part of the time is just prediction. I just have to predict how much it will produce. So when do I decide? if to produce a field in this way or in that way. How do I take that decision? <clears throat> Any comments? Okay, so let's let's maybe here, mode A. Okay, and mode B. Typically, I use mode A for new and standalone development, okay? Fields that have nothing around it, or that I want to develop the whole infrastructure from scratch. Okay, so let's call it standalone developments. Okay, new fields. Um, also, um, that I have to develop the whole infrastructure. I cannot use any of the existing infrastructure. So I have to develop Okay, and mode B, when do I use mode B? Mode B, I typically use for what I call satellite fields, okay? Fields that are satellite to an existing field, or are producing to an existing field, and are using existing facilities. Well. And typically, these are from a neighboring field. Okay? And the idea here, most of the time, the intention behind that is to produce as much as possible as early as possible.
Okay, these guys typically are of big to medium size. And these guys are typically medium to small size. Okay, more typically medium to small size. Okay. And that is if you have, for example, let's say this, you have a satellite field, okay? That is some place here, and you have another big field. Okay, that's a standalone field. Let's say that this standalone field, we know that they normally produce in plateau, right? Let's say Q oil. They're normally producing in plateau. Okay, and after some time, they start to decline, right? Decline is always something that happens. Yeah. And you see, I made my field typically to accept or to process this amount of oil, okay? this amount, Q oil of the plateau. But when I'm in the decline phase, that means that I'm not processing that much. Okay, That means I have this difference, which is I call spare capacity. Right? And this spare capacity will increase with time. Now, on the satellite, I know I have to, I want to produce to that field, for example, and I want to produce in that manner. Okay? So I look around and see which field I can use that has spare capacity. And maybe I have more than one. Okay? And then I have to decide which one has enough to take this rate, okay? This, this maximum rate. Okay, maybe I have to wait and do some timing, but that's that's the intention. I want for um, to take the spare capacity to produce to a field that has spare capacity. Yeah, clear. Okay. Um, another thing that that was a comment. So. Uh, we will see now simply um, and we are going to explore this this part. So why in principle from the from the economic on economic sense, right? Let's say that you have I'm producing in plateau mode, okay? Let's say Q oil is an oil field and I'm producing with time in plateau mode and then decline, okay? Let's assume, and that's an assumption is made typically in, field, in the field planning process, that the price of oil, let's put it in another color, okay, is also constant, okay? I assume a number, $50 per barrel, 60, 40, whatever, okay? So what is more attractive, what makes more sense from the economic perspective, point of view? You see, you're going to get, in all of these times, right, you're going to get the same amount of money, right? Simply simply the amount of oil I'm producing Q times the price. That's what I get every day in cash. Now, where is more valuable to get that cash? Today, I come to you and I say I will pay you 1,000 knot in 20 years, or I pay you 1,000 knot now. Now, okay, why? Because we have this discount rate, right? Or here we have the inflation, basically. The money paid 10 years, 20 years from now, basically is worth less than the money you get just now. So you think about it and you say, these petroleum engineers, they are a bit dumb, okay? Why do they produce a field like that? Okay, it's, it's getting, if I could do it, I will always produce my fields in mode B, okay? Producing as much as I can, as fast, and then I go away, okay? That makes sense? Yeah, okay, uh, economically it makes sense. There are some things why I cannot do that, okay? One of the things is I want, I have, I mean, and here it comes like the technical constraints that I talked about, okay? So typically I have a requirement from, from the authorities to meet certain recovery factor, okay? 
And the thing is that to produce at a very high rate, sometimes it damages somehow the reservoir, okay? You can cause that you don't recover too much. If you produce at a lower rate for longer time, you manage to increase the recovery factor. If you produce too high, maybe just to give you a very simple example, imagine you have a well in a reservoir and you're producing from an oil layer, okay? And then you have a gas cap on top, okay? If you produce too much from this well, okay, this gas will tend to cone, okay? Will tend to cone into the well, okay? Leaving, and when that happens, then the oil stops flowing, okay? The gas will be the preferred phase. So you leave many of the gas, many of the oil that is in that area will be just left non-produced. Okay, just a very simple, just to get an idea why it affects recovery factor. Okay, so that's one requirement, okay, why I cannot do it. Okay, so you could say, well, simply just add the number of wells. Okay, but then comes the most other most important factor. So I have to, okay, I have, so let's say higher plateau. So it gives you higher revenue. But when I increase it, I also need more things, okay? I need to process this amount of oil and gas, okay? If I increase, let's say, 50,000, now 100,000, I have to make all my processing facilities, my platforms, I have to make them capable of processing that rate, okay? So I have, like, two sides of... Of, uh, of a scale, okay? When you say it's like a scale, how do we make a scale? Something like that, okay? We have at one side, we have the revenue. In a very simplistic way, you're going to make this analysis, but just to, and here we have the expenses, okay? So higher plateau basically gives you, basically gives you two things. I need bigger and higher capacity processing facilities, okay? Bigger and higher capacity Also, another thing is that you need, if you have a bigger capacity facility, remember these facilities, they go on top of an offshore structure, okay? If you have an FPSO, what FPSO stands for? Everybody forgets the poor, poor storage, okay? Floating production, storage, offloading, okay? So you have to put that on top of a, of a boat, okay? Or on top of a platform. And that platform has to be able to handle that weight. If you use bigger equipment, then this boat has to be bigger, okay? So that's also increasing cost. So you need bigger... A, a offshore structure. Okay, let's call it like that. Just to be cover everything, you cover FPSO, you cover platform, and the other thing also, you might need more wells. Okay, sometimes you can do more with the same number of wells, but probably you need more because of this issue exactly. If I put I don't produce more, but I just put another well, okay? That would be also possible, but then I increase cost. And you see, you have in one side the revenue that goes up, okay, when I increase the plateau, but also the expenses go up, okay? So that not always, it's, you know, so you have to find a way where, so you have to run sensitivity analysis, and that's typically done, and you're going to do it also, run sensitivity analysis, analysis on the plateau height to define uh, the rate
Okay, and here is not only revenue that I'm looking at. I'm saying economic value, like in a general way, but the indicator we use typically is something called NPV, okay? Net present value. How many of you are familiar with NPV? Most of you? Okay, that's good. Okay, it's something that I compound all revenue, all expenses, everything, and I try to sum them up in the same uh, in the same reference, and that's like a big number that tells me the value of my project. Okay, so I have to sometimes that's something I have to make to try different heights to see where I have this equilibrium point. Okay, where is the best the best the best one? Uh, there. Are, um, Okay, now going to this comment on the processing facilities, okay, we were, um, so plateau, what? And usually you Okay, due to two reasons, okay? Simply, my system cannot produce more. Okay. It's a physical constraint. And the other reason is because I have reached one of the constraints on the processing facilities, okay? I have reached a limit on the processing facilities. Okay, and just to give you an example, we are going to look at a field called Hydron. It's just here offshore of Trondheim. And we are going to see, remember when we come, we are going to make it general, okay, the flow from the wells when they arrive to the platform, okay, have a separation. I first I separate. And then I obtain here gas, oil, and water. Okay, and these go to each own separate uh, processing train. Okay, the water I either inject or dispose to sea. The oil I send it to a tanker, and the gas also I send it to a pipeline or re-inject. Okay, so I have three different trains. Okay. So that will be gas processing, oil processing, and water processing. And because they have a physical system, if it's a, it's a, they have a physical size, okay? Separator is just a tank with some diameter. So that here I typically have a limit on the amount of maximum liquid that it can take. Okay, if you see it from the point of view of mass balance, okay, it's like you have some fluid coming in, okay, Q liquid, then you have this separator, and then you have these streams coming out, okay? Yeah, I don't want to confuse you, but typically, for example, if we talk about, um, let's, let's make a, okay, let me say we have is something like that. I'm going to make a simple sketch of a separator. Okay, the blue is water. The green one is uh, oil, and the red one is gas. Yeah, and I'm draining them from different places. To achieve a good separation, okay, I have to let that fluid, it takes some time for that fluid to circulate through that separator, okay? And then, for example, for a separator like that, the time might be something between four minutes, okay? If I have a rate of 50,000 barrels, then I get one size. 
So then if I want 100,000 barrels to be four minutes, it has to be bigger, right? So that's that's part of the, the why this constraint is given, okay? Because I have a fixed size, it can process a maximum amount of rate, and if I want to produce more rate, it should have it should be bigger or have more than one. Okay, so I typically have maximum liquid rate, maximum gas rate, and here I have maximum uh, a water rate, maximum oil rate, and maximum gas rate. For all kind of reasons. In the gas train, I have compressors. These compressors can handle just some amount of gas. Okay, if you try to, to you try to produce more, you cannot. Also, oil. I have desalting. I have uh, 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 dehydration. So also that has a limit. And the water, the same thing. Okay, I also have pumps. I have tanks. They they need some, you know, related to this time, related to the capacity. Okay, now. Now, going back to our plateau range, okay, where we produce our field, okay, we always have, let's say it's an oil field, okay, and we have our oil profile does that and, may, and goes like that, and if I have enough capacity to process this rate, okay, but something we always have to look at is the associated, what I call the associated products, okay. Not only, you never have only oil. You always have gas and water, okay? So, uh, on top of that, you have a profile of gas, okay? Then maybe, let's make it like that, okay? Q gas. And you have a profile of, of water. Okay? These numbers are in different scales, okay? Um... Okay, they, you have to be careful. Maybe the water and oil can be plotted in the same scale because they might be in barrels, but gas has a whole different scale, okay? Um, so, part of the field planning is that you should, well, actually, the gas doesn't go like that, right? Maybe the gas, usually when I have a decline in the plateau, I also have a decline in the in the gas, okay? Usually it goes a bit like that, and also the water. Because when I start reducing the rate of oil, then I also have I also have a reduction on the other rate. Okay. Here water. Now, if I have made a proper field design, okay, what do I also have to 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 take into account? Not only that I have to process this oil, okay, but I have to process the maximum amount of gas and the maximum amount of water and the maximum amount of liquid, okay, that I'm able to process all of that, okay. Otherwise, what will happen? Let's say, let's say on this simple example, okay, let me exaggerate just this curve. All of them, the both of them go from zero. They are not from zero, but. So let's say in this example, I, my gas processing capacity is up here. Let's say Q gas. Max, okay? The maximum I can process. Is that okay? That's okay, right? Because I, the gas I'm producing is always below oh, that, okay? Of course, you see here I have a very big spare capacity. And that means I am using bigger compressor, it's more costly, so it doesn't make sense, okay? I should have exactly that point right there, okay, to the maximum amount of gas. Now, what happens if I, I have a gas, you know, an amount of gas, uh, gas capacity that is down here? 
I cannot process that gas after that point, right? So what is your solution? You're stuck with this field. You have, you know, someone else made a design, and this has this Q gas maximum. What do you do? You decrease the, the rate of oil. You have no other option, unless you go and buy some separator from Alibaba, okay, and then you put it there and try to somehow fix your field. Okay, not easy, okay. But you, you cannot. The only option you have there at that point, if the constraint is met, you have to decrease the whole rate of the field. Okay? And there you will see that the field doesn't do that, but it has a decline much earlier. Okay? Now, you say, well, but that's a stupid question, right? I will never do that. Okay? I, if I have this maximum water, this maximum gas, I have to design for that. Yeah? You see, it's like a stupid question. The thing is that these profiles are highly uncertain, okay? I don't have information. I don't have, I'm not 100% sure how the reservoir looks like. So it might be that the gas goes up like that. It might be that the gas goes like that. Or it might be even the gas goes like that. Okay, there is a big uncertainty. So that's also something that I have to be very careful, and it's one of the biggest uncert uncertainties when designing the field. The capacity of the processing train. Because if I reach, when I reach this condition here, I'm messing up all the chart, okay? So you're going to get a nicer chart now. But here, the system becomes bottlenecked. Bottleneck system, okay? And bottleneck due to gas. I cannot process that gas. It's just flowing too much gas that I anticipated, that I designed for, okay? And I have no other choice but to decline the rate of the, to, to stop, uh, to, to reduce production. So on the files that I, that I um, upload, you have one file. Um, maybe we should take a break, right? Let's, let's take this, this example and then we take a break. So here you have one called Hydron, is this platform uh, located offshore of Trondheim. And let's open it and see if you recognize some of the things I was discussing now. Okay. Okay, so we have the colors. I think I use the colors. really uncommon for oil fields. They have typically a very short plateau. It can go from one to five. But there should be something that brings your attention right away from this plot. What is it? You see that the gas rate, right, with time, is very close to the capacity. And it's exactly, you see, it reaches that point when exactly this one starts to go down. Okay? So without saying anything, without looking at the system, maybe it's for any, for another reason, okay? But I look at this system, and I say, that system is bottlenecked by gas. They did a bad, for some reason, they did a bad uh, prediction of the gas rate, okay? And then the plateau was just too short, and then you started to go down, okay? Maybe they could not avoid it, okay? But you have, looks like you have a bottleneck on the gas, okay? All of you see it? Yep. Okay. Much better than my drawing, right? Mm -hmm. okay. So you have to be careful not only because I cannot produce more, not only because of physics, also because of the constraint. That's why it's important to know the rest, you know, the the processing facilities, the processing train affects affects the affects your how you produce your fuel. Okay. And it's very uncertain. This number that pro, that uh, this profile, maybe in the prediction part, it gave them completely different. Okay, maybe they say that's fine. They say that no. When they started producing the field, they got a surprise, more gas. And I have to process at that point. I have to decide. 
Maybe. I'm not sure. Okay, you have to ask. Okay, in Ecuador, you let me know, and then I let me change. Maybe it was for some other reason. Let's, uh, let's take a break, let's say uh, 10 minutes, okay? We continue. Then, um, just like, uh, so you have an idea, right? How do we define, or what kind of order of magnitude um, are these plateau rates, okay? So how, so rule of thumb, you know, I like, I... Most of the things that I say, I write, okay? That takes uh, some time. So if you want me to write less, just let me know, okay? I'm happy, but I think you like sometimes to have the notes, okay, with my comment. So rule of thumb to decide on plateau rate. Okay. Um, typically for oil fields, Okay, the plateau rate is something between, can be very short, can be a year, or can be a bit longer, but usually it's around five years, okay? So you just have in mind, oil has a very short plateau. And these are for some of the things we will see later. Uh, but basically, the way you reach this maximum, this physical constraint of the system, is, is uh, because of the pressure drop, is much more difficult is you know is much more uh, pronounced for in oil fields okay but one rule of thumb we use to define to start like a first approximation of the plateau rate is that we say an annual offtake of 0 0.1 okay of the total recoverable reserves okay trr stands for total recoverable reserves and that's not really a good uh, nomenclature okay we in SPE we use what do we use for total recoverable reserves no total rec if let's say it's a it's an oil field okay what what number will we what kind of letters do we will use with SPE nomenclature yeah, that's N, right? N is initial oil in place. Okay, but that's not what I can recover. That's what I have completely, what I have underground. But what I recover is... Okay, NP allows to have just one main letter, okay? If you want to add more, you have to use subscripts. So... Um, it will be simply N times the recovery factor, right? That's how much I can recover. 30%, I recover 30% of what was initially in place, okay? And that I call NPU, okay? P for produced and ultimate, uh, ultimate, okay? How much I have produced completely, after, you know, when I'm going to abandonment from the field, okay? Is the ultimate oil cumulative production. Okay, and we're going to use it uh, a bit later. But basically, that's 0.1 times NPU. Okay. So let's make a... Yeah, it should be subscript, right? So just don't get confused. Okay. So if I have a field, okay, I think the Goliath has around... Goliath, which is a field in the Barren Sea, it has a N of around maybe 180 million uh, standard barrels. Okay, 180 million barrels in place. Okay, how much do you think will the plateau rate using this rule of thumb be for Goliath? As a calculation managers do, okay. They, when we like to go straight to our simulators, our calculation manager, they see like the matrix, okay? Only dollars and numbers, so they do it very quickly. So they say, I have 180 millions, okay? Well, I say a recovery factor for oil fields. You can be, you know, can change very much, but let's say if we want to aim for 30%, okay? 0.3, that means an NPU, is 
How much is that? Need someone with a 54, right? And then what I will be producing annually in a year, okay? It's 54 e to the 6 times 0.1, okay? That's how much I will be producing in a year. How much is that? 5.4. And to change to rate, because I'm interested in the rate, okay, to size everything else. Then the rate, I just divide by the number of producing days in a year. If I'm operating in plateau mode, every day I should produce the same rate. Okay, so it's simply to get the QO plateau will be 5.4 divided by, and here I, I usually don't produce every day in a year. Okay, I, something, I have something called uptime. Okay, and the uptime I typically give it in a percentage, okay, and for yeah, typically it can go from 90 to 90, maybe 5%, 98%, okay? And that means that I'm producing 95% of the whole days of the year, okay? So let's say we produce, we are 100%, okay, 365. How much is that? 5.4 million divided by, make it maybe here. Okay, 14, 15,000 barrels, okay? Okay, so that will be like a first order of magnitude, what will be the plateau around 15,000 standard barrels per day? Okay, or is it 15? Okay, that number seems a bit low. I think Goliath is producing much more. So maybe I made a mistake with, with this number, okay? Or with the recovery factor. But basically that's how I get a first order approximation, how much the field will produce. And then remember, I have to change up and down to see how that affects the economy. But that's how I get an, an idea of the, of the plateau rate. Now for gas fields, it's exactly the same thing but here I typically have 0 0.02 all the way to 0 0.05 TRR. Okay, it's much, much lower. And we are going to see now why that happens. Gas fields and oil fields are very different animals that we have to, you have to be aware of that. Okay, but it's between something 0.2% and 5% and this will be 10% oil. Okay, now let's make a short, before we go to the exercise, well, we first need to do a few things before the exercise. Um, let's talk very briefly about onshore versus offshore. Okay, and if you want, I'm going to give you a very simplistic um, explanation, okay, but if you want to see, to read more, You can go to the reference material, and you can read this uh, will be page four, okay? From the reference material, where they explain what are the differences between offshore and onshore, okay? And I recommend that's uh, really well written, so you get an idea, but I'm going to give you a kind of a simpler and shorter explanation. Okay, so that will be page four, And one of the big difference when we see the production profile, okay, let's say it's oil or gas, you don't actually have, right away, you don't enter into plateau in a field. It's not that you start from day one producing like that, but you have another period. How do you call this period? It's called the build-up phase. 
And that's when whales start to get, start to be connected to the system, okay? And then I have this plateau period, and then I have the decline phase, okay? Typically offshore, we don't have an easy way just to simply put my processing facility, right? I just have to have first a platform or a, or a FPSO or something to put everything on top, okay? To have that first, it takes time, okay? And I have to know also very well how much I'm going to process, okay? Therefore, it's like I have to make... Um, in, in offshore, okay? I have to make advanced planning for my offshore structure, the size, and for the processing facilities that has to be in place, and then is when I can start producing, okay? Therefore, I tend up to be this build-up phase very, very short, okay? Because I make a big investment, okay? So offshore, it's characterized by big investment to have offshore structure and uh, processing facilities in place. Okay, and that's just to produce, right? I have no other choice. I just have to have that in place to start producing, okay? To start producing. And therefore, um, therefore, that's a big investment I have to make, and I want to produce as quick as possible to start going out of the hole, okay? I'm, have, I'm, at, I'm very big in depth, so I have to start producing very soon. So that's why the build-up phase is short. Okay, it's typically very short. Okay? And one of the disadvantages of that is every time that I drill new wells, production wells, I get more information about the system, okay? But I already made the order of the sizing of the processing facilities and everything, right? So every so it's very difficult. Here I'm drilling and getting more information on the field, and I should, in principle, include that in this design. But offshore, because that time is so, so short, I don't have time much time to do that, okay? While if I'm in a... In an onshore field, okay, and I have some facilities around, I have maybe a terminal not too far away, I can start simply to put a smaller system, okay, and start to test. So typically, maybe the difference, there is not much difference on the plateau rate, but the appraisal will be very, very, very long, okay? it will be a much, much longer period. It can take even a few years to make this uh, uh, build-up, this build-up. And that's for onshore field. Okay, such that I'm not really sure and I don't have to build a big facility, a big platform, so I can just take, start drilling, producing to a small separator, I start making money, and then I start from there getting more information, the size, the productivity, how much I should produce. And then I go gradually gathering more and more information. Okay. So in this case, I do it slowly. I have more information and I can make a better design. When I reach this phase, already have a much better uh, design. Well, here I have to do it with limited information, with a lot of risk, a lot of uncertainty and very quick Okay, to start getting a revenue. And in this uh, notes, uh, day he argues about, you know, that this uh, risk and how can you do, you know, that how that affects the design of your system, how can you improve it. So I think, you know, roughly said that's that's what is discussed in the in the notes. But I suggest if you want to get more information, just um, just read the notes. Okay. Another thing is that for remote. For onshore fields, in remote locations, the so the the this challenge, okay, the production profile is very similar 
two offshore fields. Okay. Because I have, again, if it's in a remote place, let's say in the middle of the jungle or in the desert, I have nothing there. So I have to start creating uh, highways, infrastructure. I have to, so I then I have more or less the same. It's isolated. So I have to have a very short investment period uh, and then I have to produce very quick, okay? Sometimes I have even the, the extreme that I have uh, something like that, okay? That that I just have simply no, no buildup, okay? Okay, and that's for some reason all wells are in place and then I start producing all of them at the same time, okay? So in that case, that typically people say pre-drilled wells. Okay. I start producing with the whole the whole number of wells. Okay, just keep that in mind. There's a difference between them. You have more time, but of course you delay your revenue, but you get more information, make better decision. While in this one, you have to make it very, very fast. Then another thing I want to comment is on gas versus oil. oil uh, fields, okay? So in the case of oil, okay, it has something that is related to the practical aspect, okay? Oil is a liquid. I can just put it on a tanker and I can sell it in the spot market, okay? I just can sell it any place I want that will accept my crew, okay? So it's easy, so it's easy to transport. and I is sold on the market, okay? If you have, for example, an oil which is heavy, which has, you know, Canadian crude or Venezuelan crude, that is, has some special, you can only process in one place, refine it in one place, then you're more or less trapped, okay? You have to sell to always to the same, to the same customer. But if you have an oil like in the North Sea, then you have, are flexible to, you know, to sell whatever you, but it's very simple. You put it on a tanker and you send it, or sometimes you have pipeline, okay? So uh, transportation by pipeline or tanker. While gas is a completely different story, okay? What do you need to sell to be able to sell gas? You need an infrastructure, okay? You need a pipeline because gas is not something we can put on a ship and send, okay? We have to have a pipe that continuously carries. Uh, so you need to have infrastructure, what is called gas infrastructure. That means pipeline, a pipeline network, okay? A pipeline system. So if you're lucky, you're in a place that you have a pipeline nearby and you can connect and you sell to the customer, that's fine. But if not, you have to include that cost in the system, okay? Um, and there is this field, Osta Hanstein, that they are, I think, just started production. They have to put a whole pipe from, let me see if I have, um, Okay, they have to make a pipe that is called portal lead just to connect. Let me maybe open this picture. Okay. <laughs> Located, there was nothing there from before. So to be able, they had gas, a gas field, to be able to connect it where I have the rest of the infrastructure, they had to make a new pipe just to be able to connect. I think they tie to hydro and then they go. Okay, this was existing, but they had to include that part in the development. And that's one of the challenges with the projects in the Barents Sea. There is actually no pipe going so far north. Okay, so that gas, when you develop a field there, you have to be careful what do you do with that gas, okay? If I cannot connect it to market, okay? The other thing is that gas is typically sold based on contracts, okay? So it's based on contract. 
because for the same reason, I cannot depend that they need gas or the variability of the market. I just establish a contract with a customer, with someone, okay? Someone, for example, Gasco is going to buy from me some amount, a fixed amount of gas throughout the year, okay? And these are made on, um, yeah, on, uh, see, th these are contracts based on a rate, okay, delivery rate, and also time. And sometimes might be for, you know, it's a big uh, company like Gasco that buys the gas from you at a certain amount, but sometimes may be, for example, a cement plant. Okay, you're producing gas and you make a deal with a cement plant. You need gas, this amount of gas for this amount of time. Okay, and it has to sometimes is fixed. These are used for power generation, for processes, and they need to be sure they can get the, the, that gas for one particular uh, period of time. Okay, so here you have sometimes in these contracts you have penalty. Okay, that if you cannot deliver that amount of gas, you have to pay a penalty. And they also have a swing, what is called a swing factor. Okay, that means that sometimes they can take a bit more, and you should be able to give that, or you can take a bit less, and then you should reduce the rate. Okay, these are the two main. So that's why gas tends to be more longer plateau. Okay, the, we didn't mention it here, but the plateaus of gas. We should include it here, okay, for gas fields and plateau typically something 20, 10 to 30 years is not uncommon, okay? Because of that, you make a long-term contract with a customer and then you have to provide gas for that period of time. And that helps you if you know you're going to have that constant income, then you can make plans for infrastructure that you need, uh, uh, whatever. Okay, um, just note here, there is the case for LNG, okay, liquefied natural gas, where I try to make the gas liquid, to make it more like oil-like, okay, such that I don't depend on, a, on, a, on, a, on an infrastructure, I don't depend on a pipeline, and I can sell it just on the market, okay? The only problem is I need a uh, LNG plant in the field, okay, which is usually very costly, okay, and also I need a receiving terminal, an LNG receiving terminal. Let me write it better. Okay. Thus, I have, it's true that I have more flexibility, but I only have a few terminals where I can send that. And that's the case of the, the field we're going to study today, this uh, Snow White. Uh, they have customers in, uh, in Spain, so they made their own LNG plant in, uh, in Hammerfest, in the north of Norway, North Norway. And they are sending to customers in Spain that have a LNG terminal that can receive that gas and vaporize it and send it back and send it through the, the, the pipeline. Okay, so that's an attempt to make it more oil-like and it really maybe helps, but these are very expensive investments. Okay, LNG plant, the receiving terminal, and you have to have a special tanker. Okay, because the temperature is minus 180 degrees Celsius, is it? Well, it's something very low, right? I don't remember 180 or a bit less. But uh, they have to be isolated, they have to be refrigerated, so it's a special tanker that also costs money. Okay? But keep in mind, because of that reason, you have to be careful with, uh, with gas. Okay. That's all I wanted to say for, not for today, but for, uh, on, on that, okay? And that part you can also read. There is another chapter of a book. Okay, here is uh, 
page 9, okay, on the references. And they explain, um, yeah. so that's why you have a higher plateau in oil typically and a lower plateau in gas, okay? Typically, the customer, they want to have an energy insurance that they are going to get gas for the next 20, 30 years. A energy generation, uh, warming, uh, heating, uh, whatever, okay? So you have this contract that you have daily contract quantity, that will be the plateau rate that you need. The swing factor that you're allowed, you have to give, for example, here is just saying 1.4, okay? And this penalty clause, if you don't deliver, then you have to, to. So if you want more information, you can read that page, page nine, right? Yeah, page nine references. Now, let's go to try to start to put, okay, we don't just have to be able to talk about it, but we should be able to quantify, okay, to make calculations. So the idea is that if we have a virtual model, okay, like we say some model of my field, and I can try to produce it in different ways, okay, that allows me to find the best way to, you know, to produce the actual asset, the actual field. So I'm going to make here usually a field in a very simplified way has a few elements, okay? Field, let's say field schematic. Okay, first I have a hole in the ground. Um, where I have the reservoir, right? That's my reservoir. Okay, inside that reservoir, Inside that well, I have a pipe. Okay. That's, yeah, the surface it can be the, in this case, if we are talking, it's a seabed or it can be the platform. Okay. Um, let me make it maybe with that color. Okay, and then I have Okay, then I have here I'm going to make you know just I have a set of valves, okay, that I you don't have to see for now, but these are valves that we use in in a well, okay? But then you have one main component that is uh, an adjustable valve, okay? Let's make it painted like that, okay? That is an adjustable valve, okay? All of the others, I'm able to open or either open or close, okay? All the others that I have here. This valve is an adjustable valve that is called a choke, okay? And then I go, I have my pipeline Typically, I have some section of pipe, and then I have, finally, the separator. Okay. So we have three components, reservoir, well, we have this choke, control element, and then we have this pipe. Okay. Those are basically the main, the main elements of my field. I can have many wells, I can have many pipes, I can have many chokes, but those are what I have to look to, to find the performance of my field. Okay. Reservoir engineers, they just like the reservoir. Production engineers just like the well. Flow assurance engineer, they just like the pipe. But, you know, unluckily, the field is the combination of the three. And they can be very important, okay? The reservoir engineer will always tell you the, the well do doesn't matter. The production engineer will always tell you reservoir doesn't matter. And there is some, some big fight. And sometimes it matters, sometimes it doesn't matter. But you have to know when it matters. Yeah, so if we make, um, so just be careful, okay? Here I'm saying it reaches a separator and that's it, okay? 
And that's because here I have a pressure, right? Reservoir pressure. And here I have another point where I have separator pressure. So between these two is that I have the flow. And this separator pressure typically keeps constant during the life of the field, okay? For some mechanism. Some mechanism, advanced control, level control, and pressure control, is making sure that that pressure is always constant, okay? But be careful. Here you have this limiting capacity that you have to take into account, okay? You can block it. Just analyze your system from here to there, okay? But you have to always be careful with the maximum capacity of oil, gas, and water. Always, okay? Even though you don't include it in your, in your model. So this system, let's make first, for those of you who are not uh, petroleum engineers, let's make a mechanical analog. Okay? Of a field, okay? Of the field. And the mechanical analog, I'm going to say first, the reservoir is going to be a tank. Okay? You know, in a, in a very simplistic way, it's just a way where I have a storage of fluids, oil, gas, and water. And I made a hole in that tank, okay? And I'm producing that, that fluid. Okay, so that's my reservoir here. Now, on the well, you know, to go from that point where I have reservoir pressure to flow towards the well, okay, I have some pressure losses, okay? Actually, the flow is driven by this pressure difference. Here, the pressure at this point that we are going to call PWF, what is the name of that pressure? Flowing bottom hole pressure, okay? I need them to be different, to have flow, okay? So to, to represent that pressure drop, okay, I'm going to say, I'm going to put just like a restriction, okay? And that restriction is fixed, okay? I, it usually shouldn't change. It's not something I can, mod well, I can modify, but, you know, not, not something that you should modify. So as is flow, this restriction is due to flow information. towards the wellbore, and I have here this point that is PWF, okay? So these two, the, the tank and this restriction, they are representing the reservoir system, okay? One is the storage and one is the pressure drop towards the wellbore. The next point, what did I have next on my system? Hmm? I go up, right? And the next point is the well, okay? This pipe that I have taking from minus three kilometers sub, uh, on the underground all the way to the surface. That might be seabed, might be platform. And that I also represent in the same way, okay? Like a restriction. And this is flow in tubing, okay? And this point here, how is it called? PWH. That's wellhead pressure. Okay. So how can I change, just, you know, a small detour, how can I change this restriction in the tubing? If I change the pipe size, right? I use a smaller pipe. The reservoir, this, this flow information is not so simple, but I can add something that makes easier the flow. That's something that can be acidizing, fracturing, something like that. Okay, so I could in principle change them, but it's not that they change, it's not that I, something I can do every day, okay? Something that I have to put a lot of effort and time and money to do it. What is the next point? I have the choke, right? And then I have a pipe that we can make it like that the flow line, and then I have a separator, which will be simply a condition of constant pressure. Okay, actually I shouldn't make it close maybe, because then there will be accumulation, but I have some, something like this. 
again, it's almost stupid, but you know, it helps you to to. So let's say I'm operating the field in plateau mode. Okay, what do you have to guarantee to do that the field will be operating in in plateau mode with this system? Here we're going to put a pressure gauge. Okay, we're going to be monitoring pressure. What happens with time when I take material out of the reservoir? What happens with PR? Huh? It's going to decrease, right? So the flow through the system, okay, here we have QO or Q gas. It depends on, so Q oil is a function, okay, of PR and P separator, among many other things. It is a function of that pressure difference. So with time, that guy is going to go down and down. Okay. So what can I do to you know to keep the rate constant? A control engineer. Okay. What what would be the solution of a control engineer? Okay. We can pay the control engineer say easy. You know I can make the control engineer looks at. What can I control? He said, well, this guy here, right? I can control this thing here, okay? This this valve. So I can put here a rate, uh, that will be uh, rate uh, uh, to measure rate, okay? Uh, flow rate, flow rate meter. I put here some input to a control system, okay, and that goes to that valve. And I actuate that valve such that I, you know, I maintain, I keep the rate, um, I keep the rate uh, constant. Okay. So that tells you here that depends on on uh, also the choke opening. Okay. It depends on the pressure upstream, it depends on the pressure downstream, but also it depends on the restriction I have on the choke. Okay. So intuitively, if pressure goes down with time, okay. reservoir pressure goes down with time when I start to produce, okay. what do I have to make to keep the, the rate constant, Okay. to keep the same Q? Okay, to keep this rate constant. I have to add more pressure drop or less pressure drop? Hmm? If you have this system, right? If you want to, okay, if you don't do anything, let's say you keep the choke at the same position, okay? And you just leave that system go by itself. How do you think the rate will go? You're simply down, right? Because what we were saying, the rate, if the choke is open, then the rate simply will go down, okay? Why? Because PR goes down, and then the difference between PR and P separator becomes smaller and smaller, and then you're going to get less rate, okay, with time. Now, let's say I want to produce this rate constant, okay? That was the rate, open choke, okay? What do I have to do to produce this rate at that time, zero? I have to choke, right? I have to create a pressure drop, okay? Remember, it's a function. The rate is a function of PR, of P separator, that I cannot do anything about it. Okay, this two are, one is going to go down, one is going to remain constant, but of the delta P of the choke, okay? How much, and the delta P depends on the opening, okay? How much is the choke open or not? So to produce that rate, I have to add a pressure drop, okay, due to the choke. So the choke has to be, like, partly closed, okay? Then in the next time here, what do I have to do here? Reservoir pressure went down, okay? And then I have the same choke, it's very close. Therefore, if I don't do, if I do nothing, 
the rate will also go down. Okay, so what do I have to do? Open the choke. Okay, so if you make this plot, you want to keep a constant uh, rate. Okay, then the choke opening will be the opposite. Okay, let's make it maybe with red. No, actually, it will be a choke opening from small to big. Okay. So, what happens with time? If I start opening the choke, opening the choke, opening the choke, I reach a point where the choke simply is fully open, right? And what happens then? The end of the plateau. Okay. So that's in our case, in our very simple analog, our very simple tank, very simplistic tank system, we're saying that the end of the plateau will happen when, you know, the choke is already fully open. I start with the choke close and I start opening and opening and opening. If you want a plateau rate, this this number, I cannot have plateau. Okay. Already the choke is fully open. And so, before we take another break, I just want to show you, we are not going to make it here in class, but I encourage you to look into this. Um, okay, using this field simulator. And you can change the number of wells, you can change the number of days that you produce per year, you can produce how many years, okay? so. Let's do one, one test, right? First, let's put maximum opening, full open choke, right? And let's just produce the field. Okay, for 20 years, those are all the resistance that this guy is the resistance that I have here in the tubing, the size of the opening, okay? Then I have, that's initial pressure, and that's how fast it's going to drop with time. And this guy is of, uh, yeah, also of the tubing. Okay. So let's see how it goes. Okay, simply drops because the differential pressure that is driving that from pressure to separator pressure, separator uh, reservoir pressure is declining, going down. Now let's try the other case. What happens now if I want to produce, sorry, what was the production last, last case? Maximum production was like 32, okay? 32 million. That's in standard cubic meter per day of gas. Now let's say I want to produce how much? It should be less, right? A plateau rate. What do we use? 10? 20, let's use 20, okay? So if I want to produce 20, first I know I shouldn't run it at the maximum, but it should be below that, right? So let's try it here. Okay, we are very close, okay? But you see immediately it start to decline, okay? So what do I have to do to keep the rate constant? Okay, I'm, I'm now producing the field three, four times. Okay, I, now I'm, you know, I'm done. If I cannot do that in real life. So, okay, let's start. Then I have to open, 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 open. Okay. Now you see why you have these up and downs. Okay, you try to do it at home. Okay, you open this simulator. You try to control yourself the field. Okay, it's not simple. You have this. Essentially, sometimes this choke is not something I can change automatically. Okay, I give instructions to the field maybe every month or every week. So there is a period where I have some small decline. Okay, but in principle, it's, it's difficult. Okay, it's um, let's try with another another rate. I'm getting a twelve. Okay, I'm making it more or less. Okay, 
but you have to play and you have to get some observations, okay? We are going to use uh, some of the same equations that are programmed here with a bit more advanced example here in class, okay? But just to give the idea, how do you operate the field? How do you affect the profile? I think you should you should at least try to play with this tool. Okay, so let's take a break. Today we're going to teach three hours, sorry for that. But let's take a break, let's say 15 minutes, and we come back and try to give the background for the exercise, and hopefully we cover part of the exercise, okay? So let's take a break, uh, 15 minutes. Okay, so we are going to make now um, a class, and this will be also a homework exercise. And so I suggest, um, maybe not sure if I will go too fast, but you know, maybe you try to do it here in class. You take your computer and we try to, you know, to do it together. Uh, the field that we're going to be looking at is a field called uh, Snowbit, Snow White. This uh, data is uh, not, you know, not exactly the same, but close to Snowbit. That's the location of the field. It's uh, up north in Norway. Okay, and the field is such that um, there is a picture someplace better, something like that, okay? It's developed with a concept called subsea to beach. Maybe there is another, yeah, here. Looks very bad. This one looks better. Okay, in the way that it has is you know it's hundred and if you see the the distance, okay, it's hundred and forty kilometers from shore, and here they have built that was by the time the floating LNG was not so advanced, so they decided to make an LNG plant here. For the same reason, okay, it cannot connect to any of the pipeline infrastructure of Norway, it's too far up north, so I make an LNG plant and I have a contract with Spain, okay? So the field was, uh, it has a few units, we are going to use just one to, you know, to simplify, but it was just with a pipe all the way to, to, to Hammerfest. So what we are going to make is just to try to estimate this production profile, the way it is done in the, you know, in the field development, in the field planning stage. For that, we're going to make some assumption, okay? We're going to say it's so early in the design phase that we have no idea how the subsea layout, the pipeline, how that's going to look like, okay? So we're going to neglect basically flowing wells we're going to neglect inside the well, okay, neglect flow in flow lines. We're going to neglect in the pipeline. We're going to neglect everything, okay? Just we're going to take into account just only using a reservoir model. And that you might think it's unrealistic, but actually that's how many uh, field designs are made. Okay, how do you get the production profile, even for the uh, plan for development and operation? You only use the reservoir model. And if we look at that uh, tank analog we made okay, before, uh, we have this, then we have PWF, okay, and then you have this uh, P wellhead. Okay, in our case, is you know we have many wells, but basically I'm going to look only at this part of the system. Mm -hmm. Only take these two and take them out, and that's the model I'm going to use for my uh, for to estimate production profile. So um, my main task here is to estimate. Production profile, 
and revenue of Snow White, okay, of Snow White. Using that simplified model. Now, typically, you will use a simulator, okay? You will use a, specify, a special tool, a reservoir simulator, to make that. Some names, uh, typical reservoir simulator, you might use some uh, are Eclipse, that's from Slumberger. You might have, um, uh, is, um, what is the name, uh, CMG. Uh, you might use a sensor. There are a few names and a few software, a few packages, okay? But we're going to make some assumptions on this field such that we can use a simpler approach, okay? But we are going to use the same logic that a reservoir simulator uses, okay? Exactly the same, but with some assumptions, okay? One assumption is that, so our model assumptions, are that the reservoir is actually very relatively homogeneous, okay? So homogeneous reservoir, Okay, such that if I make a change and it's really well connected, okay, it has a very high connectivity. Okay, such that if I, let's say, start to drain from one place, okay, then the, it's going to, everything is going to even out. It's not that I will be draining for one place and then that area will be depleted and the rest will remain. It's that it's very well connected. It behaves almost like a tank. And the other assumption is that all wells are um, all wells are identical. That's also something I make in early phases identical. That's an assumption also I make in early phase of, of field development. And the last one we are going to make is that it has a high permeability, okay? And that has to do with, you know, with this restriction that I have here, that is relatively easy to flow in this formation, such that the transient is very short. And we are going to see now why this is important. The equation, so we're going to use basically two equations, okay? We're going to use one equation for the tank, okay? And we're going to use one equation for this pressure drop, okay? And the thing is that the tank, the equation we're going to use is PR, okay? Reservoir pressure is a function of PI divided by a factor set I, the deviation factor, set R, 1 minus NP, uh, sorry, GP, for gas, we call it G, okay, divided by G. GP divided by G. Okay, so let's see, that's a reservoir pressure. This is initial reservoir pressure. Okay. That G is initial gas in place. And this is cumulative production. Gas production. Okay, and basically I can express that with an integral. I can say GP will be the integral from time zero to T of QG DT, okay? But be careful, we have to use consistent units, okay? This time, typically I do it in years, okay? This T is typically in years, and we are going to make it in year basis, and this guy is, if we use Norwegian units, 
SI units is using a standard cubic meter per day. Okay, so we have to use this uptime uh, factor to convert how many productive days there are in a year. Okay? And then we have these two that are simply gas properties, right? Properties of the gas that I have. And this is called the deviation factor. Well, Okay, and this is a function of the deviation factor. It's yeah. like a property, right? It's like saying density, it's like saying enthalpy, it's a property, a thermodynamic property of the gas. And it's a function of pressure, temperature, composition, but we say like critical properties, right? PC and TC, critical pressure and critical temperature. Because if we make Remember, this set is like a chart. Okay, we can get it from a chart. You're going to have it programmed in, in, in Excel. But C is a function of PR. That reduced pressure is pressure divided by PC. Okay, a constant for that, for that um, uh, fluid. And then you have, you have some behavior, strange behavior like that. And this is for TR. That's for another TR. TR2, TR1 where TR is T divided by TC, okay? We, we can see here, let's find it, compatibility factor gas. Okay, deviation factor, gas deviation factor. Okay, we have a chart where we have the pressure, we find the critical pressure, we have the temperature, we find the critical temperature, and then we read this set, okay? So please note that this equation, in principle, is implicit, right? Because reservoir pressure, of course, is constant, right? It doesn't change with time. So let, let's look at the equation to see how we are going to solve it, okay? So we have PR, PI I have, okay? Did I activate this? Yeah. Okay. One minus GP over G. This G I have. Okay. The initial some reason I have an estimate how much. And this I'm going to calculate from the production. Okay. The how much I have produced so far. So so far, no problems. Set I that I have here is a function of reservoir temperature that I have. Okay, I know. And then I have measured. And then I have PI, which also I have. I have measured. So there is no problem here. That number I have. But I have here now set R. And set R is a function of reservoir temperature that I have. But it's a function of reservoir pressure. So that makes it implicit, right? Well, how do I solve this equation? I have to assume pressure, right? Then I calculate set. And I solve the equation, I see, you know, if the pressure I assume is the same that I calculate. Okay? But it's complicated. You have to make it with this graph, and it's not so simple. Okay? You have to iterate on that chart. Assume pressure. So first you have, the way we are going to use this equation, I have GP. I assume a pressure. This one I have, this one I have. I assume a pressure. Calculate set and then calculate PR. Are the two the same? No, then I assume another P, okay? But that simple equation, another consideration is that we are talking about dry gas, okay? Dry gas. That means there is no condensation coming out of that gas. Okay, no condensation, no liquids. Now, that's one equation, and you see more or less how do we use it. And now we need a second equation that is this restriction, okay? And that's where, well, okay, that's where these other assumptions come into play. 
high permeability, the transient is very short. If that happens, then I can use this, what we call the back pressure equation. for pressure loss in the formation, okay? That expression tells me that the rate that I produce from that well, okay, will be equal to a constant times PR squared minus PWF squared to the power of N, okay? And these are some constants that I can measure in the field. I can go and measure uh, or I can also estimate from an equation, I can estimate this C, and I can estimate this N. Therefore, I only need to estimate the rate, I only need reservoir pressure and PWF. Okay? If you think about it, well, in the example of the tank, it's like reservoir pressure and separator pressure. But now we are cutting our system much smaller. We're just looking at the tank and the restriction, so we are saying between those two. Okay, and that's it. Those are all only the only two equations we are going to use. Now there is a a, a big problem. Okay, that also reservoir engineers they they have to deal with that. The thing is that we are taking here out. Okay, on that system, we are taking from here out the choke. Okay. So to be able to control production, to be able to go up and down in the plateau, right, you have to be able to have some control element, okay? Now, what is the choke doing in this tank, okay, implicitly? So what is the choke? If I change here the choke, what should happen with this pressure and this pressure if I close the choke? Hmm? Increase the pressure, right? But in this system, in this reservoir model that I have, I don't have that choke. So how do I include the effect of the choke? You increase pre-WF, right? So that will be a way, you say, well, the closing the choke increase overall the pressure drop, okay? Therefore, if I increase this PWF, it should have the same effect, okay? Yes, so think about it, the way we are going to control so our control element, okay, will be PWF. Or our control variable, let's call it that way, will be PWF just because of the constraint we don't have the choke in our model, okay? We just have the tank and we just have this uh, restriction. Um, so, and how do I know where do you have open choke? One thing I can control that PWF, right? But how do I know how do I make fully open choke? And how, I know, I know that if I, if I close it, right? this pressure will start to increase. But what is the minimum? What is the minimum what is fully open? And that's a big question, okay? Nobody knows. And that's why reservoir engineers, they fight with production engineers, okay? They want to have, so basically you want to know, okay, the main question every people is asking, everyone, even people now in when they do field planning, is what is PWF when choke is fully open. Okay, everybody's asking that question and trying to find with a good solution. So you might say the pressure there that I have is the minimum. I need to flow the rate from that point all the way to the separator. Yes, is the minimum that I need. I can have more, okay, then I produce more. But it's the minimum that I need to produce that rate to the separator. So I just say, and that's what reservoir engineers make very often, they say, P, they define a PWF minimum, okay? If I put the fully open choke, that's the pressure I'm going to get. I'm not saying, you will see now, 
in a few classes, that's not a, a good assumption for some cases, but we are going to live with that. We're going to do exactly what reservoir engineers are doing. Okay, they define this minimum pressure. Okay, so I define this minimum pressure. Okay, so let's go to the exercise. I think that's everything we need, okay? And we need to define a plateau rate, okay? So that's the minimum, I think, in our exercise will be 120 bar. And somebody had to make that calculation, okay? Someone had to take, they had to go to a poor production engineer to ask how much pressure do I need to flow from here and up, okay? How much pressure do I need to flow from here up? And they got a number and they're happy, 120 bar, okay? You're going to see now that's not a good assumption, but you know we are going to do it for now. So let's go to our Excel sheet. This day, and I call it a Snow White Reservoir Simulation Proxy, okay? It's exactly, we're going to do exactly the step, the sequence of steps that are made on a reservoir, um, on a reservoir simulator. Okay, so here I have this G that I told you about, uh, temperature of the reservoir, initial pressure, those are things that you need for that equation. You have this C and N, okay, that was the restriction from the formation. And you have this molecular weight is to calculate this, basically, this PC and TC, okay? In this case, our gas is very similar to methane. Actually, Snow White produced very close to methane. So you can just simply go and pick PC and TC for methane, okay? I have nine wells, okay, that I want to use. That's PWF minimum, open choke. I reach that pressure. I want to produce the field rate will be 20 million, okay, of standard cubic uh, per day. And that we're going then to calculate the revenue. So that's why we need these two, the gas price and the discount rate. And I should produce all the way to 8 million, okay? Because after that, it's like the operational expenditures to pay for the salaries, to pay for the chemicals, to pay for the power. They are equal to the revenue. Okay, at that time I stop. And I have been told that I have to produce a field up to 8 million. Okay? So, what do we do first? We start at the beginning, right? Okay? So we say, here I'm saying, like in accountancy, okay? I'm saying I'm at the end of year zero. That's just the first day of the first year of production, or the first second of the first year of production. End of year one is the the last day of day of year one, or is the first few seconds of year two, okay? Like in accountancy, that's just the starting. In that case, what is reservoir pressure? Let's start with that part, okay? It's simply, I haven't produced anything, so it should be just initial reservoir pressure. Okay. 276. Now, to calculate the rate, right, how much I can produce at that time, what do you suggest? To see if we can produce, we want to produce this 20, right? So what... Um, and we have nine, nine wells, okay? So basically we have nine times this one, okay? So the Q of the field, the Q of the field will be nine times, or the number of wells to make it more generic, times um, Q of the well, okay? And all wells are identical, therefore I have C PR squared minus PWF squared to the power of n. Yes, all wells identical, and that's how you calculate the rate of the field. 
and I want this number to be, I wish or I desire to be 20 million, okay, e to the sixth. That's what I want. So how do I know if I can produce that rate or not? Reservoir simulator, we are going to do exactly the same that reservoir simulator is doing. Reservoir simulator will say, well, let's see in the worst case that I have to fully open the choke. Let's see what rate do we get there, okay? So they just simply come to this equation and they substitute the minimum PWF, pressure at open choke, okay? And that's what they call in our Excel sheet, that's the one that is called well potential, okay? That number I call flow production potential of the well in reservoir simulator, okay? Don't be, don't be confused. So we have to apply that here, that equation, okay? C times PR minus this minimum WF to the power of N, okay? To avoid typing the equation here, we are going to use something called uh, this BBA, okay? So if you press Alt, F11, I think you have to press Alt and then very quickly F11. You're going to this module, okay? And you see on the left, you have like a tree explaining the file, okay, that we have. We have an Excel file and inside we have all of these sheets, okay, that are called data, layout, equation, etc. But you have also something called module, okay? Module is like a repository where I can have some expressions that are called functions, okay? A function that takes input and gives you output, only one, okay? So let's say here, for example, flow equation, okay? So here are a bunch of things we're not going to use yet, okay? What we have, yeah, we didn't mention it, but this restriction equation, okay, is called IPR, inflow performance relationship. Okay, this, this equation here, that's called inflow performance relationship. Okay, and uh, it is abbreviated by saying IPR. Okay. And that tells you the relationship, if you plot it, okay, always tells you the relationship between PWF and the rate. Okay, QG. If I have zero rate, that means in this equation, oh. what should I get? PWF equal to PR, right? If I have zero rate. But then when I start increasing the rate, I should lower the pressure, okay, on that point, and then to get to get rate. Okay, so that's the equation we are going to use. It's already programmed for you. It's here, CR, PR, minus PWF to the power of N, okay? So to call it, simply you have to come and you place on the cell where you want to apply the equation. Then you use this FX, okay? Insert a function. Then you go and select user defined, something that I custom made for this uh, example. And then I find IPR, IPR, the one that gives me the rate, okay, QG. Use that, CR is here, N is here, PWF is, uh, sorry, PR is here, and PWF is here. Okay, and here I obtain a number, how much is it? 661 61 million looks like. Right? Okay. Now, before we click OK, okay, we got already the result. Excel works in a way like this will have all of them will have the same equation, right? All of these cells. The only thing now, they will take this reservoir pressure and they will take this reservoir pressure for each year, right? Now, if I leave it like that, when I drag it down, it will pick its PR, okay? But it will also shift on the C and the N. And that I don't want, 
I want the weld always to have the same C and N. Okay? So how do I avoid that it will shift also on the C and N and also P dot here? F4. Okay? So I use F4 to block here and here and here. Okay? And on the minimum. Okay? That tells me that that well can produce single well, okay? We're looking at only one. Can produce 61 million K okay, standard cubic meter per day. How much do I really need? Let's see on the field, okay? On the field scale. How much do I need? Uh, this is the field times by the number of wells, right? To calculate this potential, how much it can produce, the field can produce. Okay. A very large obscene number. Okay. If I put that with open chunk, oh. that field will produce five, 556 million. How much do I need? I need just 20. Does it mean I can produce? Can I produce a 20 or not? Yeah. Okay. I can produce because. What I can produce with open choke is much bigger than what I want to produce, okay? So simply, I just say the production of my field will be 20, okay? I can actually take this number from here, okay? And block it, okay? So, so far we have done exactly what reservoir simulation simulator is doing. Reservoir simu simulator with the bottom hole pressure minimum Substituting the equation, calculate this maximum rate, and then compare. Is the maximum rate bigger than the one that the user wants? Yes. Then I produce the rate that the user wants. If not, okay, you you just enter into the client, okay? You just produce the one that you can. Okay? What is the next step? Now we found at year one, or starting of year one, we can produce 20 million, okay? Let's move to the next year, okay? And here we're going to make an approximation, okay? We're going to say, okay, so here the way we are progressing, okay? We have Q of the field versus time, and we were in year zero, then we are going to go to year one, two, three, Etc. Okay. I'm going to make an assumption now, but then later we're going to take it. But we're going to say that the rate remains actually constant for that year. Okay, we're going to say that the rate in year zero, the rate that I just found, it will remain constant throughout the year. Okay, just an approximation. Thus, if that means that if I, I have a profile that looks something like that, okay, I will be approximating it by small rectangles, okay? And it might not be exactly accurate. In some places where the curve is going down, I'm actually over predicting how much I produce, okay? But just make, just to make our life easy, let's make this assumption, okay? Then I can calculate how much I, okay, so how much I have produced when I start the field? Nothing, right? Zero, GP is zero. Okay. How much I produced in that year, in the first year? Okay, it will be, let's see if we make a formula, it will be this rate, Right? Assuming it's constant throughout the year times this year minus this year, right? Multiplied by, remember the units, what I told you before, right? The units are not the same. So how do I convert from year to today? I need this uptime, right? Which I don't have. So let's make a one one more for uptime. Uptime. We're going to make it in days, and that will be 
How much shop time we put? Let's put something like 95, okay? 0 0.95 times 365 is 346. Okay, so we say here how much we produce was this rate times this number minus this number, okay, times the uptime. And I block uptime. And when I drag it, that equation down okay, to the next cell, it should be okay, because now it will say this and this, okay, and it will say this rate. So it's okay. But the thing that shouldn't change is this rate. Either. Now, that's what I produced in that year, okay? How much then I have produced by the end of year one? Whatever I had from before, plus whatever I produce in the year, right? Okay. Now, I already have, then I have, now the next step is I want to find this potential rate, right? To see if I, year one, I can still produce 20 million. Okay. For to calculate the potential, I need reservoir pressure. How do I calculate reservoir pressure with cumulative production? With the other equation, right? That we just, maybe you already forgot, okay? With this equation, the material balance equation. This equation here, okay? So let's use that, that equation. We have GP, we have G, we have uh, PI, but we need these two guys, this set. Okay, this deviation factor. Let's assume for now, this, these are just simply, you know, that the number in the chart, if you see, just, just to be able to finish part of the exercise. Um, you see the number, it's changed, you know, from maybe 0.4 all the way to 1.2 or something like that, okay? So let's assume that set, okay? Instead of going into that, calculating that, let's assume set just for now, okay? We're going to, or you will have maybe to improve it. So assumption, set remains more or less constant, okay? And set is more or less equal to one. An approximation, just, you know, to, to make it a bit shorter here. So I'm going to put here one, it will always be one, throughout the time, and then I have to find what is the recovery factor. Initially, I haven't recovered anything, right, so it's zero, but in general, it's how much I have produced at that point in time, divided by how much you have initially in place. Reservoir pressure, I try to find that equation. Again, I press Alt F11. Okay, and you see here to the left, I have different repositories. I have flow equations. I have this set that we are not going to use for now. And we have this material balance. And we have that equation okay, that I showed you earlier. You have you calculate pressure. You have initial pressure, deviation factor, and recovery factor. Okay, so let's use that, that expression. Also call the equation by saying MD, okay, by typing the name of the of the function, and to get the you know the input, I click again here. So I say PI initial reservoir pressure here that should be blocked, okay. I always using the same initial pressure. Initial set is this guy here, okay. At the initial time, I also should block it. Set is a set at the current. Okay. And we said it's implicit. Okay. It's a problem. We don't have that pressure yet. So I will assume in our, in my, in this case that the set changes very slowly with pressure. Okay. 
The pressure is changing very slowly, so sets change very slowly. So I can use the set from the previous year. Okay, just, a, just an approximation. And then finally, the recovery factor is here. Okay, and I click enter. You see the pressure has dropped in a year from 276 to 269. Seven bar. That's not, that's not, uh, I think Snowbit has around that, that number. What is the next step? We are just getting to the end, so you have to help me. Repeat, right? What we have done before. You have PR, calculate the potential, see if you can produce. Okay, you have exactly to repeat the same procedure we have done before. How, what is the maximum we can produce? If it's greater than this number, then I produce that number that I want. Then I go to the next, I put how much I have produced, the recovery factor, the load pressure, then I calculate how much is the maximum I can produce. Then, if that's greater than this one, I produce this one, the one that I want, and I repeat for all the cells. Luckily, we have the computer, okay, it's not smart yet, so it cannot take our jobs yet. So, we can just simply drag this one, right? Down. And now it should be taking this reservoir pressure, but the same C and N and minimum. And this should be taking also this times the number of wells. Okay? The only thing that I need to make this fully automated is what? This one, I made it by hand, right? I just type it by hand. What should have been better? Use, to use logic, right? The logic of the computer. The computer can say if this number is greater than this number, right? Put this number. Otherwise, use this number, right? So that's what we are going to do now, the last step, and then with that, hopefully, we finish class. So we say, for that, we use this function called if. Okay, we put the condition first, if uh, this guy is greater than this rate, then simply use the rate, right? Otherwise, use the maximum that the field can produce. Go to open choke, okay? Unless, what do we have to block here? Be careful. We have to block B12, okay? So F4 and F4. Okay. Should it work if I drag it down? Okay, let's see. For 55 years. Okay, something happened here. I have a minus someplace. Let's see, IPR. Huh? Oh, the set factor. So you see, let's see, let's not record on what happens, okay? This one here, so I can produce all the way to year 20, okay? And that year, when I open show, actually here, this one is shorter than the future. Therefore, I have to draw. If you go to the profile of the field, Something strange happened here. Two. Yeah, you should have this drop, but not so big. So I don't know. Oh yeah, you see that the pressure at the reservoir reached already 120, okay? So below that point, actually, you can produce 120. 
So really our profile should be up to here. Up to here. Okay. So let's just change that anyway. Okay. Okay. Oh, sorry. Should should have the what is that here? And that's 42. That should change here to 42. Okay. So you reach the end of the plateau around here, 19, 20, and then it drops and actually drops very sharp. Okay. Until here, you know that you have reached, maybe you reach almost the economical rate. So what you will have to do with that part of your first exercise is you'll have to try now the different plateau heights and see what is the length of the plateau. Okay, it's already one. Any question before we close? No, no, you use the equations you have from. In the Excel sheet, the, all of these equations are there. So you don't have to program anything. If you want, if you can do it. If you want to make your own function, you want to make a script, but you don't have each in this course, you won't have to program anything. Okay? But that, I will put that on the exercise for next week. So next week, we talk a bit more about that, but then we go to another, another topic. So, uh, so we discussed some things about the main performance indicator, which is the profile. We saw um, there are two main modes, okay, A and B. You are aware they don't look so smooth always, but they lose a lot of jumpiness. Uh, we saw onshore, offshore, oil and gas development. And then we went into how do we actually predict this performance. And uh, we used our first example with a simplified reservoir simulator, okay? It's simplified, but that's what the simulator is doing. It has other set of equations, more complex. So it is exactly that, calculating maximum flow, see if I can produce, and then assign that, that flow. Okay? See you on, on uh, yeah, next week. Thank <laughs> you.